informático óptimo. IT channel. Today we are going to learn how to install Windows 11 on a slightly old laptop. This computer is from 2010 or 2011. On any laptop from that era, well, on almost any laptop from that era there should be no problem, or from that era onwards, okay? Well, we cover up the customer's data. They brought us a compact Presario 1237ES laptop. You have to format and install Windows 11, it is a laptop from around 2010 and you have to install basic applications and antivirus. Good, perfect. The client has spoken to me personally, okay, to ask me if Windows 11 could be installed on this computer and there really is no problem. You all know about planned obsolescence. I'm not going to explain in depth what it is because you all know it, but basically it is that the sooner the device dies, the sooner you buy another one from the manufacturer and thus you get richer. Let's see what this person had here. F1 to continue. While I tell you that there are several versions of Windows 11, at the moment there are seven versions, we have Home, Pro, Pro Education, Pro for Workstations, Enterprise, which is the one we are going to install, Windows 11 Education, and Mixed Reality. We have tried them all and this method only works with the Enterprise version, okay? We haven't tried the last one, Mixed Reality, but because of the name it could work, mixing realities can be quite good. As I said, we are going to install Windows 11, Enterprise version, okay? We are going to do it on DVD, but you can install it via USB, with a pen drive, with an external disk or however you like. We thought it would be more fun to install it with a DVD. We take out the DVD. Good. And let's start the task. Good. The first thing you have to do, there is no need to load the operating system, we leave it pressed until it turns off. Let's turn it on and enter the BIOS, okay? On this computer, on almost all HP and Compaq, it is usually F10 to enter the BIOS. I don't want to save changes and exit, F10 is also used to exit, that's why it gave us that message, depending on the computer you have, it can also be F2, Control S, the most common is F2 or F10, okay? We go to System Configuration, Boot Options, and CD-ROM has to be enabled, okay? If it is disabled, you change it, save and continue, escape, exit, exit saving changes, to run, ok, there it would begin to recognize the DVD, boot from the DVD, once it starts booting and loading the old operating system, we take out the DVD, ok, he has already taken his first data from the DVD, we take it out, we place it very well centered on the keyboard, ok? To center it correctly on the keyboard, we have two keys where the index fingers are placed, which have the marks, since the middle ones are G and H, well, through the hole you can see the G and the H. It would be well centered there, ok? The tools we are going to use today can be a wrench or a small hammer, ok? We're left with the wrench, I think it's going to be much more fun. What we are going to do is that we are going to integrate the physical part of the DVD with the physical part of the computer. Once the physical part of the DVD is integrated with the physical part of the motherboard, it will start taking the data and integrate it for itself, ok? Even if Windows continues loading, there is no problem, 
we are going to start integrating the DVD, we give a few small taps on everything so that the computer begins to recognize it well, and get to work. Well, don't be afraid. If the DVD moves a little, try to put the pieces you find back together, okay? And we will continue. If the keyboard loosens a little, don't worry because it is completely normal. Let's see if there are any small pieces here, yes, let's not leave any files behind, because they are all needed to start the system, if the screen has turned off, no problem, you can turn it off again, you leave it pressed until it turns off, perfect. And we turn it back on. Get lit. Come on, let's wait a moment. I don't know if you heard that the hard drive is making some strange noises, okay? It is completely normal, it sounds like this because it has already started to take the files from the DVD, you have to continue. Well, you can remove the keyboard, and this way we can better integrate the DVD, there. Integrated, always with the green part, or blue in your case facing down, okay. Because if not, the data is in the green zone, if we put it upwards, it does not go away, to integrate with the motherboard. Okay, always the data at the bottom. Without fear, maybe it would be good, once the screen no longer turns on, you would have to disconnect the power, okay. Because it can give us a good spark. We leave the connector there and continue. It's about integrating the DVD well, let's see if there is space here. There is still no space, but there will be. There is now more space. If you remove the case a little, you have better access to the motherboard. Okay, here's the CD drive, we won't need it anymore, it's bent there a little bit, dude. Well, nothing happens, you always have to be very careful, okay? Because as far as the client is concerned, we can't make any scratches or anything, this has to fit again after assembling it, perfect, okay? Good, you put together the pieces of DVD that you find in inside. You can also repair with the other part of the key, okay? Yes, well closed. Well, look, a RAM has come out. Well, there are still places around here where you can still integrate more. Come on, don't be afraid. We remove the RAM, we are not going to damage it. If you see that it does not integrate well on the board, you can also fix it on the screen. Well, the screen looks like it's ready. There. We already have the motherboard here in view. Where is the DVD? Now yes, don't forget, the data is always downwards. There. If we bend a little, we now have access here to the processor part. Do you see this little square? Just below is the processor. If we integrate it there it will process much faster and read the data much better. There. In the processor. Well. I think it is already integrated. This chip has come out. It doesn't look good. I read it to you. X me. It's a transistor. We leave it there so it doesn't get lost. And it may be that this is going to be finished. Almost. Now yes. The RAM is very important not to be lost. You can't see the memory slot here because it is under the motherboard, okay? Do you see that the slot is not here? Maybe we can see it here. Let's see, that's right, there are the memory slots. The RAM cannot be left out, it must be placed. Although one of the slots has been damaged a little there, the other is practically intact. It is placed at an angle, like that. And then it is pushed down. Do you see that the contacts have been left out a little bit? That is wrongly put. 
It has to fit perfectly. So, yes. Do you see that now all the contacts have entered correctly? And now we push it down. It has to click. There, you have clicked on one of the tabs and you will not reach the other, but it will not be necessary either, just in case, we are going to integrate it a little more. Integrate it. Even if a piece of groove is missing, there is no problem. And well, I think that with this, you already have Windows 11 installed correctly. Well, let's try to see if it turns on properly and loads the new operating system or if. On the contrary, there has been a problem with your previous Windows. I think Windows 7 was the system that this computer had. We placed the keyboard connector. We'll need the cable again if he hasn't fled. Here it is. One more thing, I hadn't told you, but especially if you live in a 7th, it would be advisable to close the window in case pieces could fly outside. If it doesn't turn on and if pieces have fallen onto the street, you can search there in case you find any that are missing from the computer so you can put them back. In our case I think they are all here. Good, we do not have a power button. It is very important that you store all the pieces well, okay? We have lost the power button, this way there will be no one who turns this on. Well anyway, blink a little. The power LED is flashing anyway, okay? That is because the battery is not charging well or because the correct voltage is not reaching the motherboard. Let's fix it with a few small touches. Now we are going to use the hammer. You can use the flat part, or the round part, whichever you like best. I'm going to use the round one, right where the connector goes. Do you see the connector there? That is what needs to be adjusted because it does not make good contact and does not provide good voltage. There, you can see the connector there. That is, without fear. Well, the screen has separated a little, but nothing happens. This way we can remove the connector more easily. Oh, it's more difficult with one hand, you have to understand me. Well, anyway, I think that as soon as we repair the connector a little, maybe it will have to be replaced, because it seems a little that I think it doesn't do well, contact, okay, and as soon as we replace it, this will work without a problem. Come on, and we already have Windows 11 installed. This is almost ready. A couple more taps. Now yes, come on, I hope it's been useful to you, okay? And that you liked it, but above all that it was useful to you, don't be afraid, this may be a little scary, but that's okay. Let's close it to return it to the customer. Like this. Perfect. Very good, another satisfied customer. Bye guys, see you in the next video.